This is the Wealth Ability for CPAs show. Better clients, better practice, better life. Here's Tom Wheelwright. Welcome to the Wealth Ability show for CPAs where we're always discovering how to build better clients, a better practice, and a better life. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright, your host, founder, and CEO of the Wealth Ability Network. So things are changing massively in the financial industry. And accountants, we're part of this change, and we have to deal with these changes. So how do we? What, what's our place there? How do we deal with the changes? I'm very happy. Today, we're going to be able to discover just what skills we need and, and especially actually specifically five top skills we're going to need and able to compete in this new environment and able to deal with this new environment that all these changes are going on, whether we like it or not. And I'm very, very pleased, um, very honored to have uh, a, a good friend of mine, Rob Brown, who's um, who uh, heads up the Accounting Influencers uh, Roundtable and uh, the the whole their podcast network. I mean, everything, Rob. What you guys, what you and Martin are doing, are pretty amazing. Can you give us just a thank you for coming on the show, and can you give us a little bit of your background? Thank you, Tom. And uh, you've been on our show as well. We run a daily show in the accounting world, and uh, you've honoured us with your presence there. A former high school math teacher got out of teaching because I was coaching children to pass tests, not educating, and took a master's in human resource development and ended up in training, teaching bankers, accountants, lawyers, technically super smart people to sell themselves and communicate better. All was going well until 2016 when I had a very unexpected stroke, a brain hemorrhage, and had to recalibrate my life at that point. I had epilepsy, lost some vision, not able to drive, so pivoted my business and I was working with a great firm at that point that were very loyal. So I went all out for accountants. I started a podcast that went weekly called Accounting Influencers. Just loved interviewing people like you. I'm an inveterate learner and uh, finding out what's going on. And then partnered with Martin Bissett a few years later to form Accounting Influencers. So now we have the podcast and we have a round table that we're honored that you're a part of are people that serve the accounting profession, sell to and through accountants and want to be a force for good. And that's the main thing that we're doing right now. So, so in part of this round table, uh, one of the things that I've learned now, you know, I, I'm, I'm very keyed into the entrepreneurial world, but it's only in the last year that I started to key into the accounting world. And uh, in, in large part, that's why I joined Accounting Influencers Roundtable. And one thing I noticed is that you have a lot of fintech companies in the Accounting Influencers Roundtable. How do you think fintech is affecting the accounting world? That's a really interesting question. We could reword that question and say, who has the ear of the accountant these days? Who do they listen to? Where do they go to for advice? Back in the day, it used to be the professional associations and institutes, and they ran the CPD and that curriculum. Then we had the emergence of gurus and influencers and experts that they listened to. It's increasingly become the fintechs and the vendors with the vendor agenda and the software because software is changing the game. There's no doubt about that. It's also the peers. That's the emergence of networks, associations, alliances. You and a, a very vibrant community with wealth ability there where people like to peer over the garden wall of their peers and find out what's going on. So in this changing world, it is a a prime question. Where do you go for the right information at the right level? We know that the software vendors and suppliers are increasingly powerful. They own a lot of data. They had a lot of VC and private equity money now. So they've got budgets to play with and they are slowly changing the game, which is why accountants need to be robust and stay up skilled and manage their firms prudently in order to compete and stay relevant. Yeah, so so it kind of brings me brings to mind the fox and the hen house. And the question yes. is, is, you know, when when you've got all that those fintech people in uh, in air uh, on on the round table, is is the fox in the hen house? Because it it does seem like a lot of the fintech companies. I mean, we over here we experience this 
uh, primarily with Intuit, with um, uh, and, and the bank, the banks, by the way, have experienced it with Intuit as well with Rocket Mortgage, right? We've experienced with, with QuickBooks. And initially they said, well, we're here to serve the accounting profession. And now it's almost like we're here to take over from the accounting mm. profession. We don't need you anymore because you gave us your clients. And so now we don't need you anymore. Or you have, um, or, or you, and, and then they're also saying, well, look, we're going to hire CPAs on our own or H&R Block. We're going to hire CPAs. We used to just serve the you know, W-2 wage earner, and now we're going to serve the business owner and we're even going to handle, uh, you know, handle your IRS audit when that comes along. So how do you, how do you deal with that? And where do you see the accounting prof professionals versus the fintech um, data mongers, I would call them, like to call them? Well, it's, it's gone a little further than that, Tom, and that we're hearing stories now of business owners that are bypassing the accountant and going straight to software experts right. that are accredited in a certain platform that they need to get all of the compliance done and they don't really need a CPA anymore. So there are lots of things going on. Just to correct you slightly, the Accounting Influencers Roundtable is made up partly of software and fintech vendors, but there's also a range of consultancies in there, IT consultancy for accountants, website design, telemarketing for accountants, and a whole swathe of podcasters, coaches, consultants, trainers, gurus, experts, mentors. Some of them are CPAs and qualified accountants themselves that want to serve the profession and make it better. And, and you're definitely one of those. In fact, you're pretty unique because you run a CPA firm and you serve the profession. But going back to your point, who has the voice? Who has the clout? Who has the data? Who has the power? Who has the budgets to make a noise? If you're a Nike or a Coca-Cola, you can penetrate any market because you spend millions on advertising mm -hmm. and marketing. So who's going to shout the loudest? Now, the fintechs are, are certainly changing the game in that the technology is shaping the profession and the pandemic has been an accelerator of that. But the fintechs will never replace the advice and interpreting the data and helping businesses make strategic decisions and give them insights. Nobody can do like, like the CPA if it's done right. So so let, let's go to that because um, we had Jody Paydar, uh, the radical CPA, on our, on our show. She's she's amazing. Uh, she's also leader. really controversial. She'll call it out, Tom, won't she? I love it. I love it. That's what I love about her. Um, she's not afraid of anything or anybody. Um, but what, she, I mean, kind of her premise is, well, look, technology is good for us because in ways, it allows us to do what we should be doing in, instead of doing what we've been doing. So it, it really gives us more tools to do analysis. It, um, it's going to reduce the number of people we need, which is critical when we have fewer people coming in and more people leaving. So we ought to embrace that instead of in, instead of fighting out. What do you, what do you say to that? What what do you see? You you mentioned advice. What do you see the accountant's role? The, what do you see the accounts role is going to be in the future? Well, I can tell you what the accountant's role has been in the past, and it's historical. But the fintech that's coming out and the software is taking care of the automation and the grunt work and the legwork, which is freeing accountants up to do what where their most value is, which is being that advisor. Now, the pandemic also has encouraged accountants to be coaches, consultants, trainers, mentors, part-time CFOs, uh, shoulders to cry on, friends, all of that stuff as well. But for the accountant to stay relevant and competitive, they need for me to be developing five core areas of skill or attributes to stay in the game. Otherwise, we're, we are going to have a dramatic shift where the accountant is going to be blindsided or marginalized in the whole business ecosystem. Yeah. So uh, let's talk, let's get into those. So here, here's the five skills we promised at the beginning. And, uh, I, and I'm, I'm dying to hear what your top five are and uh, what your thoughts are on. Okay. So, and, and then how do we acquire those skills? So let's go for number one. Sure. And I should really ask you your top five to see if they coincide with mine, but let's see if we can get some agreement. 
So uh, not in any particular order, but it is good to start with this one, which is technical skills. We need people that can navigate the murky waters of the tax space and all the changes that are going on. We need accountants and CPAs that know what they're talking about. Now, we take that for granted a lot of the time because they are the experts and they have the qualifications and the, the examinations. They've done that. But there is such a lot going on that it's hard to stay current. And, and you and I both know accountants that are not technically as strong as they should be and even once you get technically strong being able to communicate that and teach that and coach through that and advise clients through that so the technical skills they always need upgrading don't they well i, I you're right i mean and that is a baseline right i mean you shouldn't be yeah. in the profession if you don't have the technical skills it's kind of like i've i've seen um softwares general ledger softwares come out and they say well we're going to be better than quickbooks but they don't do with the fundamentals that quickbooks does okay yeah. so you miss the fundamentals you skip to everything else. And then people go, well, but wait a minute, I still need the fundamentals and yeah. having those fundamental technical skills. Now, the thing is, is you don't have to know everything. I mean, I don't know everything. You know, I will tell clients all the time and go, yes, I have 40 years of experience. Yes. I spent a lot of time in the tax law, probably a lot more than most people. Um, on the other hand, I, I know that the more I know, the more re I realize I don't know. And one of the things I've heard you say before, Rob, is that recognizing that you don't know things is as important as knowing what you do know and always looking for new, new knowledge and new information is just as critical. Well, you model that, Tom. You're an inveterate learner uh, and you're a student. So we both get that. There's a wonderful quote, quote by Eric Hoffer who says, to learn, you need a certain degree of confidence. Too much confidence and you feel you won't have to learn. Too little confidence and you feel that you can't learn. So to get technical and stay upgraded, accountants have, have got to have that desire to do it. They've got to want to do it because, yes, they may get a little bit of time apportioned in their week where they're allowed to do it. But generally, it's a discretionary activity. You stay updated or you're out of work. So you've got to do that in your spare time, a lot of it, or your weekends, or do that extra reading and, and whatever you need to stay on top of what is happening in a changing world. And if they won't do it or can't do it, they say, don't they, that someone that can't read is the same as someone that won't read. They're both illiterate. So neither of them get the wisdom from Good books. Point. So you've got to want to do it. But yeah, certainly technical skills gets you in the game and keeps you in the game. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I have... Um... I have a confession to make. My wife is also a CPA. Okay. And she's also- Must special. be really fun in your house. I got to tell you, it is. We get to talk about tax in the morning. We get to talk about tax all day. And we had to talk about tax in the afternoon, in the evening. I mean, it is fun. amazing what fun, we get fun, to do. Fun, fun, fun in the Wheelwright household. Yes, it is. It is like 24 hours of fun <laughs> in the Wheelwright household, for sure. <laughs> it does mean that Pretty much every time we go out to dinner, um, we, you know, it's deductible because it's a business meal, right? Because right. we're always talking about that. But I will tell you that I do think actually that's important when you talk about technical skills. And that is having somebody either uh, one of the problems that I think that a lot of CPA owners have is firm owners is who do they talk to? about this now, because mm -hmm. most, a lot of the times they know so much more than their staff and their staff's looking to them to teach them where, who do you go to? And this is where I think networks. So this is where I've learned so much in the accounting influencers round table about the accounting profession. That's why I came into the, that's why I, I wanted to be there. It's been one of the best investments I've ever made truly uh, Rob. And, and it's, and it's because I get to learn from other people in this area because I realize that there's so much I don't know about the uh, about the accounting profession, even though I've been in it for 40 years and had successful accounting firms and bought and sold them and built them. And we, we do uh, some pretty amazing marketing. But what I love about our network, and this is what I love about networks, this is why I like networks, is that if I have a question... I can go to somebody else and I can run it by them and they're a peer. Okay. They're not an employee. There's no, um, you know, I, I don't have to worry about how do I look right to them because they're a peer. And, and I think that's, I think that's, I think that's why we're seeing more and more networks pop up. I think that's why people want to be part of a network. And that's frankly, one of the great 
things of a network is that you do have those peers to go to. You don't know something, you can ask them, you want to run something by, you want to learn about the ta- the new tax provisions. We've had five major tax changes in the last few years. Who do you go to? Hmm. Well, who has the ear of the accountant? And while we ponder that one, what you've got, Tom, that not everyone has is coachability, the humility to learn and be schooled and be curious. Not everyone has that. And you'd think CPAs would have that given they've studied so hard for their exams. But a lot of them, particularly at partner level, get to that point where they feel like they've done all their learning and they've done all their schooling. And they do not particularly want to stay current. But going back to the, the question of who has the ear of accountants, uh, we think about professional development and staying current. In the past, it would have been the professional associations that would accredit their qualification. They would go there. Then we had the emergence of gurus and influencers and coaches and experts that would say, this is the way to run your firm. This is what practice management should look like. Then we had the emergence of the vendors and the fintech people saying, well, technology is shaping the profession. This is what you need to know. Then we have the emergence of the, the networks and associations and alliances and You know, small firms, mid-sized firms these days need international representation in the global world that we live in. So we join some of the networks, even communities like yours. And you alluded to that curiosity of a peer over the garden wall to see what your neighbors are doing, to see what best practice is, which is becoming increasingly difficult to define in a post-pandemic world. So lots of people, and, and let's add to that, the academic side of things in keeping your knowledge current. Mm -hmm. And let's add to that all the many CPD, CPE providers out there that are trying to plug the gaps for you. There are many places that accountants can go and most of them are valid, but the point is they've got to make the time to go there and learn what they need to plug the gap. So that, takes care of the technical stuff for the moment. On, on, on top of that, they have, have to be patient because most continuing education is so boring <laughs> that, uh, seriously, Rob, a, a, a few years ago, I went to um, what should have been a really good conference in Boston. Yeah. And I flew to Boston and uh, this was for high net worth, this was tax planning for high net worth individuals. I'm going, okay. okay. Other venues are available. It wasn't boring because it was in Boston, right? No, no, no. Boston was, it was a beautiful hotel. It was a beautiful <laughs> location. I love Boston. Yeah. Um, I have a brother who taught at Harvard for 30 years. So I've, wow. I've, I've been there a few times. And, um, but I, I distinctly remember um, at noon on the first day, and it was two days, at noon on the first day, I called my assistant and I said, get me out of here because I could not stand the poor delivery of the information. Because guess what? If you put up a bunch of, if I'm sorry, but if you put a bunch of PowerPoints up and you read your PowerPoints, I'm, put it in a book and sell me the book. Okay. Kill me now. I, 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 right. Exactly. Kill me now. And and so I'm just going, so I left. I, I, I literally, I, I cannot... I, I don't have a lot of tolerance for people who know a lot, but can't teach it. And okay. you're a teacher. I'm sure you understand that. So take not, so understand the technical is good. I think that one of the challenges that we're, one of the challenges we're trying to solve, frankly, in uh, both our WealthAbility CPA, which is what I'm doing with uh, your partner, Martin, and also in all of our, you know, our seminars that we're doing, like the, like the, the one we do every year in November is let's make it fun. You know, learning should be fun because you talk about, well, you know, I have a natural curiosity, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stick around for boring speakers. Okay. Just because I'm curious if, if, I mean, seriously, there are a lot of speakers in the accounting profession that can take a really interesting subject and make it really dull. So uh, that's, that, that's a challenge. So, but let's, I want to keep moving on because we got four more to go um, and not that much time. So we have technical skills. I 100% agree. That's the baseline. What's number two? Technology. Technology skills. Being able to know more than turning a computer on and off. We're not asking accountants and CPAs to be geeks and nerds and write code, but we are asking them to be tech savvy. We are encouraging them to take more than a passing interest in technology and mobile and digital and apps. They don't need to know what the vendor knows, but they need to interface for the client to talk to the vendors and have robust conversations with them and not get sold to by vendors that sell them tech that Mm -hmm. serves the accounting firm and not the client. So 
technologically savvy, keeping up to date with things. A little bit harder for the older generation, but we can all do it. And we all know people that can help us, even if we have to ask a 12 year old. There's no excuse these days for not being technologically skilled up. That's why my partners are all are, are all millennials. Seriously, I, I can't. They're, they're millennials or Gen Xers because those people have they grew up with technology. I didn't. So I, I do rely on them quite heavily. Well, you're honest about that, Tom. You're on the record as hiring a lot of smarter people than you are that do stuff that you For can't sure. or won't do. And, and that is the next best thing. If you're not tech savvy, get people around you that are, that can have those conversations right. for you. Absolutely. Number I would hundred percent agree. Technology is huge. I, I, I've, I've done some uh, uh, surveys with our network members, our, our, our 60 different CPA firms and uh, technology is in, is certainly in the top three of what they need. And they go, you know, it's just so confusing out there. How do you, you know, how do you determine what works? What doesn't work? How do I use more than 10% of the technology that I have? So I do agree that's number two. So what would you say is number three then? People skills. Oh my heavens. That's the hard part. <laughs> well, we're in a virtual world, but having gone through social isolation and we're on zoom like this talking in different parts of the world accountants have always needed to communicate but they've done it from a top-down hierarchy type i'm the expert i'm telling you what to do but this increasingly important role of a trusted advisor you've got to have some of the answers but you definitely need all of the questions so the ability to persuade and influence is fundamental to how leaders operate You've got to drive change projects. You've got to get buy-in for your ideas. And, and I'm venturing onto the fifth skill a little bit, which is selling. So let me put these two together. Selling an idea, selling a proposition, selling a change management project, selling an initiative, selling a piece of tech to your firm to take on and adopt. If we can't sell what we truly believe in, selling a culture, selling an ideal or a vision, that's the fifth skill. We'll skip out the fourth. We'll come back to it. But it comes back to people skills, which is the third, the ability to communicate, as you said, to teach so that you can convey not just happening with the data, the accounting data, the numbers, but tell the story behind the numbers and give your business owner clients the insights they need to make strategic business decisions that helps them thrive. So, so I heard a couple of uh uh, subsets to that people skills there. Uh, the first was learning to ask questions um, and, and to go along with your number five sales. Uh, I, I learned a long time ago um, in, in sales training, and I've taken a lot of sales training, is that uh, the person who's asking the questions is always winning. And the person who is answering the questions is losing. So it, it's it's really because you control conversations for asking questions, right? You don't control a conversation by giving answers. Now, you so, and the other thing I would say about that is, um, in my mind, somebody's, you and whoever you're talking to is, you're always selling. So it's just that who's going to win the sell. And most of the time, we lose the sale to our clients. They they get our fees reduced. They um they 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 get us to do things for free. They get us to do things we don't want to do. Um, they're selling us and they're winning. Okay, or our our employees are selling us on I, bigger raise, fewer hours, whatever they're selling us on. Remember, I I just think that's important to recognize is that you can say that okay, sell is a four letter word, but I had a really good good guest, um, Stacy Hall, uh, on my podcast recently, and um, which I encourage everybody to listen to this one. I'm going to have, I actually have um, my marketing and sales team both listening to this. She said, you can, you can actually do it from your own comfort zone. So these people skills, she says, they don't have to be outside of your comfort zone. So how do you deal with that? Now, Rob, you're you know, you, you're very good with people and uh, it seems natural to you. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do people deal with that who aren't naturally outgoing? They're introverts and they, how do they stay within their comfort zone and still do it? It's a great question. On our website, accountinginfluencers.com, we have a test. It's an influencer score for people serving the accounting profession who want more 
credibility and executive presence and buy-in for the decisions with their peers as well. So accountant to accountant. And there are 10 categories on there of influence that you can be good at. And communicating that, you might be a great speaker and a great orator. Great. Well, get on stages and do webinars. You might be a great writer and a thinker and a reflector. Great. Then write stuff. You might be a bit pithy and entertaining. So get on social media and put sound bites up there and get people thinking. You might be a great interviewer. You're that. But there's lots of different ways to communicate in a way that plays to your strengths. Now, your weapons, Tom, are not my weapons. You're born with a different set of skills or talents. You're wired up differently. You laugh at different things. You communicate in different ways. You relate to different people. Your sense of humor is different to other people's. We're all unique. So we've got to find a way of communicating that plays to our strengths. Take networking, for example. You can network in a dark room with an internet connection and build a formidable set of connections. And you and I both know people that have done business for thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, and they've never met them. They've never shaken hands. So there is a way to communicate that deals to all kinds of personalities and all kinds of strengths. And you just got to find your own way. Don't teach people to work a room. Don't teach yeah. people to go to conferences. If that's uncomfortable for them, let them find a different way. That's what I'd say to people skills. No, I a hundred percent agree with you. I, you know, I'm old enough that I'm, I don't, I'm an old dog and I, I, frankly, I don't want to learn new tricks. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I like, um, I think that building on the skills I have building on the natural uh, uh, inclinations I have building on those uh, strengths is way more productive than trying to overcome weaknesses. And, um, you know, we may want to modify the weaknesses a little bit, but to completely overcome them, you know, if you really want to, that's great, but I don't think you have to. I think this is a, a really good point that people can be very comfortable in their own skin and, and do what they want to do. For example, I do not like working in a room. I, I, I am like, do not put me in a reception. Do not, you know, put me in that group of people unless they're, you know, if I've been on stage and I've been speaking and then it's all about them, that's great. And this is the other thing I learned, Rob. So people ask me all the time, because I've been on stage in front of 12,000 people before. And how do you go on stage without being nervous? Hmm. And I always, I always tell people, rule number one is, it's not about you. It's about them. So once it's about them and not you, What's there to be nervous about? The challenge I think that a lot of accountants have is I'm afraid of losing a client. That makes it about me. I'm afraid mm -hmm. of saying the wrong thing. That makes it about me. I'm afraid of um, whatever my fear is. If I say I'm afraid, it's about me. Where If I go, well, wait a minute, how do I make this about Rob Brown? instead of about Tom Wheelwright? How do I make this about Martin Bissett instead of Tom Wheelwright? How do I make this about my client, my staff, my vendor, whoever it is I'm working with, to me, that takes a lot of the fear out of it because guess what? It's not about me. I can just concentrate on them. Yes, we need to be, be fair with each other, but I can concentrate on them. Yeah. Quick story, Tom, about plenty of strengths rather than shoring up your weaknesses. I had an anecdote from a coach of Tiger Woods back in the day when he was at his prime. We all know what a great golfer he was. And he was third in the world in the rankings off the tee. That's driving the ball. I'm not a golfer, but you've got to hit it long and you've got to hit it straight. And he was the third best in the world. Getting out of bunkers and the sand, he was 49th best in the world. So guess which of those two strokes he did, he spent the most time on? I would expect driving from uh, Absolutely. Driving the ball. Because he was so good at it, he could put some clear water between him and most of the competition. Right. He rarely spent any time trying to get out of bunkers because his drive was so good, he didn't get into a lot of bunkers. So that's a great story about playing to your strengths rather than ensuring up your weaknesses. Let's finish off these five skills, Tom. Let's we do talked it. briefly about selling skills. Just to add to that, the accountant that is most valuable to the firm acts as a revenue source. So the ability to start conversations with prospects, bringing you leads, bringing you work for the firm, cross-sell and upsell existing clients, that speaks to the selling, which is why in my mind, I differentiate it from the people skills. It goes beyond the it people does. skills to persuading, negotiating, influencing. And if you're ready to move on, that just leaves us with one last skill. Let's do it. 
social, sorry, commercial acumen, business awareness, entrepreneurial thinking, the ability to not think like an accountant or a CFO or a finance person, but to think like a Tom Wheelwright or a Robert Kiyosaki and think like a business builder and a business owner. That is something that the accountants would do really well to start reading around and reading outside the topic and reading business magazines and going to non-accounting conferences. That for me is the key skill that's going to make accountants current and relevant. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll emphasize that in two ways. First of all, uh, we have two rules. People ask, well, how do you, how do you um, determine who you invite into your network? Because you can't invite everybody and not everybody's going to be a fit. And I said, it's really simple. I have two rules. That's it. And the first one is um, you have to be an entrepreneur first and a CPA second. Great. An entrepreneur first, CPA second. And the second one is I have to like hanging out with you. Okay. okay. So that's, that, that's, that it, because seriously, I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't want to hang out with people anymore that I don't like. So <laughs> I, I get to choose that. I'm, I'm in a place where I can choose that. I actually think we are all in that place, but, but, I, but, you know, financially and, you know, reputation and so forth, I certainly uh, have that freedom to do that. Um, but, but the entrepreneurial, I think that's so important because to me, you're fake if you're not. You're a, you're a fake. You're a phony. And frankly, you should be in a back room working for somebody else. Um, ha I have a good friend who runs a large network of independent pharmacy owners. And he said, he, he's told me many times, he goes, um, one of the best pieces of advice he ever got, and I believe it was from Dan Sullivan of Strategic Coach. Yeah. He said, um, if you can't fire somebody, if you can't make that decision, you need to go get a job. Mm -hmm. So my, my belief is if you're not entrepreneurial and you can't, and you're not willing to learn those, those, uh, how to be a business, uh, a business person, how to, how to be an entrepreneur, how to, how to do those things you should go work for somebody else. And, and I'm, I'm, I, I know that's going to be controversial with some of the, our listeners, but I truly believe that our clients deserve better. I, you know, I can going back to that very first point you made, Rob, it's about the clients. It's not about you. It's about the clients. And when we make it about the clients, now we don't worry about our people skills. Now we don't worry about, you know, we, our, our technical skills are for our clients. We're looking at technology that serves the clients, not just serves us. We're looking at everything we're looking at is for the clients. And what will happen is, is then the clients recognize that. And then they go, okay, that's the most valuable person on my team. Because in my view, what we should be is the most valuable team member on our client's team. Yeah. Well, many accountants that you work with are accounting firm owners. So they are entrepreneurs by nature, but the vast majority are not, Tom. They are employed. So getting them to think more like entrepreneurs and business owners is going to make them more relevant in the rapidly changing world we're coming into. That's the point. No, I agree. And I, I, one, one last thing on that, and then we'll wrap up. It also will make you happier. So there's a great book out there called um, by Sean Acor called the happiness advantage. And in that book, he says, there's three ways to look at a job. You can look at it as it's a job. I need to do the job. It's a career or it's a calling. And the people who are happiest are the people for whom it's a calling. And he said, somebody who's a janitor, it can be a calling. Somebody who's a physician, it can be a job. So it's not the, it's not the position itself that it's matters. the meaning, the purpose. It, it's what does it mean to you? Yeah. Okay. So to me, I have no question being that, that teacher, you know, being that entrepreneur, this is my calling. Okay. I know, I know that this is that to me, this is calling. I don't, yes, I get paid for it, but that's not why I do it. Okay. It's a calling. And, you know, the more we can think about, our, you know, let's find a place where we can use our skill sets, so find a place that fits us so that for us, it's a calling and it's no longer a job or even a career. So final, well said, wor Tom. final words, Rob. <laughs> the world is changing. This is not like a football game where you go in first half, play your heart out, you 
come back, have a drink, and then you go out the second half and everything's the same. COVID and pandemic has changed the game. It's accelerated the need for change and upskilling. It's been a catalyst for all kinds of attributes you need to stay relevant. So when you come out for the second half, as we enter the post-pandemic world, there's a new set of rules. There is a new world. There is new expectations from clients. There are new players and different players. And it's it's not even the same game. So to think that things are going to stay the same and you're going to be okay is a recipe for obsolescence, for irrelevance. So our key message as we leave here is the world is changing and you've got to change with it and you've got to be coachable and willing to put in the time to upgrade your skills and your knowledge. Otherwise, you're going to get left behind. And if anyone can do that, the accountancy CPAs can do it because they've done it before. I Amen. I love it. Rob, if we want to learn more about you, more about what you're doing, more about um, uh, Accounting Influencers Roundtable and podcasts, where would we go? Thank you, Tom. The LinkedIn platform is my favorite go-to place. So if you find Rob Brown on LinkedIn, accountinginfluencers.com also has our influencer test and they can find out all about the podcast as well there. And uh, we're a big fan of your show, Tom. So we often mention your show in our shows. Ditto, ditto. So I'm a big fan of what you're doing. Um, You know, this is the fun thing about what we're doing together in air is that it's a bunch of accountants that are cooperating, not competing. And we're uh, we're out to help accountants uh, change the world. We're trying to be a force for good, Tom, and, and that's good in today's challenging world because mental health, mental resilience, mental well-being, God promises tomorrow to nobody. We don't know what's coming up and, and staying sharp and mitigating all the risks out there. We're doing the best we can and trying to help. Thank you, Rob. So just remember, when we, when we look at these five skills, technical, technological, people skills, entrepreneurial skills, and sales skills, we're always going to be able to develop better clients, a better practice, and better life. We'll see you all next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Wealth Ability for CPA show. Better clients, better practice, better life. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.